What's up guys, welcome to Voicey here, this is your host, Captain Zek, and today's subreddit is r slash entitled parents. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode. This story's called, Crazy Entitled Mother Yells at Me for Exposing Her and Her Daughter Mistreating Their French Exchange Student. Some background. My school, in Germany, I went to before graduating, offered an exchange program for everyone interested in spending two weeks abroad doing an internship. No language skills besides English were required. I was quite fluent in speaking French at that time and decided to join the French exchange, as did about six others. When arriving in France in spring 2016, it became quite obvious that I had to translate for everyone in the group, as the French people lacked usable English skills and I was the only one speaking French in the group. Ironically, my exchange partner was the only French guy who was fluent in several foreign languages, including English. We had a great time together, besides his dad being a severe alcoholic who had quite an impulsive temper to say the least. All of the group, except me and the guy I was living with, were girls. The ones from my school having been quite spoiled and used to high standards. Unfortunately, some of the girls from my school, including entitled daughter, were quite unhappy having to share a small room with one or two others. One of the girl's parents, not entitled daughter but still bloody entitled, even called our principal and demanded being put into another family due to this issue. She had never talked to her exchange family that were quite unhappily surprised by a visit of the principal of the French school who explained to them that the girl did not want to stay any longer in their house due to the poor living conditions. The daughter burst into tears. Her family was devastated. They were from Africa, I don't know which country, but basically hospitality was like super important to them and hearing that a guest of their home did not enjoy living there was like a huge insult to them. They did not even want to let their daughter go to Germany because they felt so miserable for being bad hosts. The girl herself was super nice and super funny and we all liked her a lot. So I managed to convince her parents by phone to let her daughter go to Germany and explain to them that they did nothing wrong. She stayed at a friend of mine's house and we were having a great time. All in all, the exchange was a disaster for most of the Germans, especially for entitled daughter, who was angry that her exchange partner's family, let's call her Ashley, could not afford inviting her to fancy restaurants and that she had to pay for going out with herself. Her parents paid for food and cooked fresh every evening. She freaking lost it and told us that she would take revenge. Fast forward to the summer of the same year. The exchange students arrived and were picked up by their exchange families at our school. Entitled daughter was living in the mountains about 20 kilometers outside the city and so did Ashley. We had a lot of time to do sightseeing with our partners. My parents bought huge amounts of wine so we could party at our house every night. Unfortunately, Ashley was never allowed to join us despite my parents offering to Entitled Daughter's parents to pick her up and bring her back to them every time. We later found out that Entitled Daughter and Entitled Mother were locking Ashley up in her room while going out. She even had to pay for the food. One evening, Entitled Mother asked Ashley if she liked eating at a Spanish restaurant and she approved, yet mentioned that she was tight on budget and therefore could not afford going out. They left her at home, let her cook her own meal, and went out eating on their own again. When we met Ashley five days into the exchange for the first time, she told us everything. I was talking to Entitled Daughter and asked her what the hell she was thinking she was doing. Her parents are among some of the wealthiest of our region and treating someone this badly just because she has less money than her family is beyond inappropriate. In fact, the little Ashley and her family had, they were willing to share with her and in return, she got locked down in her room. Despite at that point, my parents were more than happy to invite her on every trip we were planning with others of the group on their behalf. She just told me to mind my own business and that she treated her the same way she was treated at her house, which was basically a lie as she was not locked down like an animal. Fast forward to the last day of the exchange. We managed to take Ashley on some assorted excursions after arguing for hours with entitled mother and entitled daughter each time and being told that they would not be held liable if anything bad happened to Ashley and that she is now our problem. That night, there was a major soccer match between France and some other country on TV, and we decided to go to a local shisha bar to watch the game there. Ashley was crying as Entitled Mother and Entitled Daughter forbade her from joining us. 
I was phoning them about 10 times and told them they should let her enjoy her last evening in Germany and that it would be much more of an effort for us to bring her home immediately, as two others were living in the same area that would join us that evening as well, and we would basically have twice the effort if she would need to go home ASAP. Entitled Mother sighed and said, We wanted to spend the last evening with her together as she is like a sister to Entitled Daughter, but she can decide what she prefers. The answer was quite obvious, so we got the last instruction from Entitled Mother that Ashley needs to be home by midnight. Well, it got late. Very late. The guys at the shisha bar found out that we had some French companions with us and played French music the whole night. Khalid, Kenny Arcana, etc. We were singing together, smoking a crap load of shisha, and had a great time. Ashley was home at 2.30 a.m. Pinned to the door of her room, she found a letter. Dear Ashley, as we noticed you have not been home by the time we agreed on, this severe breach of trust really disappoints us. We no longer wish you welcome in this house. Please pack all of your stuff and leave by 7 a.m. There will be a bus departing by 7.15. You can buy yourself some food at the train station. We do not ever want to see you again. Goodbye. Ashley was calling me in tears. I called the girl living closest to Entitled Daughter, until the exchange they were even best friends, and asked her to pick up Ashley in the morning. As buses are quite complicated where we live, and it is quite irresponsible to ask a foreigner with bad English skills to take them. You basically need to change three times in order to get to the train station. She agreed. In the morning, we were all meeting in the hall of the train station, looking with shock and disgust at the letter presented to us by Ashley. I then came up with a glorious idea to take one last group picture. Me in the middle, holding the letter in my hands with the saddest face I could make, and the rest of the group standing around me, pulling up the middle finger and grinning into the camera. We then uploaded the photo to a social media platform with the title, Goodbye Forever, and a link to the profile of Entitled Daughter. Literally 15 minutes later, Entitled Mother came furiously storming into the hall, approaching me from behind and shouting my name into my ear, whilst I was talking to one of our teachers who was waiting with us. I was standing there in shock for a few seconds. She then grabbed my collar and pushed me against the wall, shouting at me about how I ruined her family's reputation and demanded I tell her who took the picture. I was still baffled by the situation, so were the others. She then proceeded to shout through the hall in the most German-sounding English ever, Who took this picture? Who took this picture? The second time, one brave girl of the group stood up to explain to her that this was a group project, while some random guy at the train station cafe was losing it and approached Entitled Mother to tell her to step off, as he wanted to enjoy his coffee, before going to work and could not stand her tantrum any longer. She left. Needless to say, I got a major dressing down by my teacher, who was still shaking under shock. Entitled Mother even demanded a written apology by everyone from the group for their rude behavior. I later handed the letter by Entitled Mother to our principal and explained to him the whole situation. As Entitled Mother asked him to get me kicked out of the school for the picture on social media, he then explained to her to shut up and never approach him again or else her daughter would be kicked out of school for severe misbehavior. I had lots of people back me up on the story and was one of the best students at school, so the chances of me getting kicked out were low from the beginning. Last year, I found out that every teacher knows the story of that infamous last day of the German-French exchange. One even approached me to ask if this was actually true, yet the story has evolved quite a bit and became much more brutal every time told. In the end, it sounded like Entitled Mother punched me in the face. Yeah, that's why you don't let people like that represent your country. Oh boy. That poor girl Ashley, that's insanely messed up. And her poor family, to be insulted that badly. Ugh, people suck. This story's called, You Threatened to Stab My Child. Long time lurker just remembered the story posting off phone, so please excuse my typos and grammar. I worked a summer job as a teenager at this small-scale theme park in the gift shop. We sold fudge, very overpriced and mediocre at best, but it was crazy how much money it brought in. We had slabs on the counter and used a very dull knife and spatula to cut and scoop the fudge. The fudge was on a counter behind a glass display, but an issue was that the glass didn't go all the way to the counter, which left a small slit where children loved to poke their fingers through and poke the fudge. Oftentimes, they'd poke, lick their fingers, and continue digging. 
I understood with the smaller kids not having a lot of control with a colorful piece of candy in front of them, I would politely ask them to stop and alert their parents, who 99.9% .9 of the time would apologize and pull their kid away. I would just make a mental note to throw the entire edge of the fudge away later. But one day, I met a Karen. She had a son that's around 10, 11 years old. He keeps asking me for free samples and I tell him I can't give him one without a parent's permission. We always ask parents in case the children have allergies. He's pretty upset, goes over and asks his mom who just ignores him. He comes back and stands in front of the fudge. I figure he'll just wait until the mother comes over, so I go about doing other things behind the counter. It didn't take five seconds for me to look back over and see him digging his fingers under the glass to scrape off some fudge. I tell him sternly to stop and look over at the mother, who's with a friend, and she gives me a what of it sort of glare. Whatever. I figure he's having leftover toddler spit anyways. He stopped long enough for me to turn away again, and he's right back at it. Really aggressively, I should say, since he's 10-ish and has the dexterity to really try and get to it. I tell him to stop again, more loudly this time. The kid freezes and begins to cry. The mother immediately barrels over and asks me why I'm yelling at her son. I tell her him touching the fudge makes it unsuitable to sell. Other families are looking at us with mixed reactions. Some outraged at me and others giving the mother a judgmental look. The entitlement of parents during family vacations wasn't a new concept to me. This lady then points out that I'd yelled at her son with a knife in my hand and that I was threatening him with a knife. I don't even know what to say to that, I'm so surprised. And I was mentally kicking myself because I usually always have the knife pointed down. But in that moment, I had it pointing up as I was cutting the fudge squares earlier. But keep in mind, I'm behind an entire counter from her son. She then starts trying to get other people involved, saying I have no right to yell at her son and threaten to hurt him. Her friend backs her up and calls me a terrible human being. Other parents start chiming in. It's a full-on onslaught on my 16-year-old self. She insists on talking to a manager and, not being able to handle it, I quickly call one on the radio. They get there and she rushes over to tell my manager how I was threatening to stab and kill ladies and gentlemen, her 10-year-old son. I'm nearly in tears, and there's also a line of people trying to check out. One lady whispered to me how she needs to parent her child better, which in the moment was reassuring. She's going off on the manager, not letting me get a single word in. I saw that arguing with her was getting nowhere, so I spoke over her loud enough to apologize and say something along the lines of, Look, I can't do anything else here but apologize. This kind of caught her off guard, and she instantly started to let up on her abuse. I walked back to the counter to help other customers while she continued to talk to my manager. The situation mellowed out, and my boss eventually let me go to the break room to cry. My manager commended me for appeasing such a raging bench, and I got a positive remark on my file for professionalism. It may seem unfair, but this is the degree of customer service at tourist places. They're always right. Anyways, years after the fact, my younger sister got a summer job at the same place in the same gift shop as me, and she was telling me how they're not allowed to address customers with a knife in their hand because of an incident where someone accused a staff member of threatening them. And I was like, oh, hey, <laughs> that's solely because of me. No sweet justice or anything, but that job definitely burned me out of customer service. I now work in a lab where I listen to podcasts and talk to no one all day and love every minute of it. Yeah, that just sounds like hell on earth my question is um why didn't they just why didn't they just you know remove the outer edge of the fudge and uh so the kids can't poke it with their nasty fingers and then once you deplete an entire row of fudge you can just replace it with the fudge that you cut out or just better yet <laughs> use a smaller pan or plug the hole or anything there's so many solutions to this problem and it's kind of ridiculous that they didn't use any of them Podcasts are pretty cool. I used to listen to a lot of them, but now I just listen to one because it's a really good podcast about video games and I love video games in case you haven't been able to tell. <laughs> and uh, yeah, they're called four player podcast and I 100% recommend them. They're super funny and uh, they're really genuine guys and they just love video games. They love talking about them and you get a lot of unique perspectives. 
it's pretty great. Plus, their community isn't super huge, so they can, you know, usually give each community member a lot of attention. Like, you can ask a question if you're a supporter on Patreon. They're just such a great podcast, I can't recommend them enough. This story's called, Entitled Siblings Don't Want to Care for Parents and Instead Want the Youngest to Quit School to Do It. Long time lurker, first time poster, this just happened last night and I am still seething at it. This past Saturday, my dad had to be hospitalized because he had a stroke. My sister took him to the hospital. The next day, my mom had to be hospitalized because her oxygen levels were low and she's had a cold for about three weeks now. My dad was discharged yesterday, thankfully, but that is when the drama and entitlements from my siblings came out. Mind you, there is a 13 to 15 year gap between my siblings and I. They are in their late 30s, while I am in my mid 20s. They live 20 to 40 miles from my parents, while I am away at university 120 miles from them. When my mom was hospitalized three times last year, I was there each time. I had to give up spring break, a quarter of school, in which I failed two classes, and my summer internship. In addition, one of my brothers paid me $100 to care for my mom during spring break because he didn't want to do it because he didn't want to help her shower or help her to the bathroom and wipe her. I just got into my major and I'm a senior at university, so I'll be done with school in December, taking a few extra quarters. I am finally thriving. When my siblings all basically gang up on me through text and tell me to quit school and take time off. One of them even went so far as to telling my dad to tell me to take a year off school. My dad would never allow that because he knows that school is important to me. And my mom finally has been coming around to understanding also. My siblings think that because they are way older than me, that they are entitled to boss me around and make me care for our parents simply because they don't want to. They throw out excuses of having obligations such as kids and jobs, but I am a full-time student with three jobs and a difficult financial situation. At this point, it seems like they don't care and feel entitled to live their lives like they want while trying to make the youngest suffer by taking a whole load of crap. But I stood up for myself. I finally was able to stand up for myself and speak my mind and I feel freaking amazing. Either way, screw siblings that feel entitled. Man, that really sucks. Um, I don't know how good those parents were at being parents, but I don't know. If you're able to help your parents in any way you can, I feel like you should do it, even if they are kind of jerks. Obviously, if you have horrible parents that didn't take care of you at all and just abandoned you, then obviously screw them. You don't need them in your life. But, you know, if you have parents that took care of you and maybe they were jerks, but, you know, if they still loved you and took care of you, you know, until you moved out, then I feel like, you know, you kind of owe them a little bit. But obviously, you shouldn't see it as, oh, yeah, I owe them. You should just do it out of love, not because you're like, oh, I'm doing you a favor. No, I'm taking care of you because I care about you and that's that's how love works and ideally how a family should work but obviously we don't have a lot of ideal families out there nowadays or ever i don't know obviously it's easy to say that when i don't have to take care of my parents right now so who knows <laughs> i could be speaking out of my ass don't forget to like subscribe and hit that bell to never miss an episode